What is going on, Patriot Gardeners? It's your buddy Murdoch. And tonight, I have an extraordinarily special video for you. Something that I've been saving up, something that's been highly requested, and something that I thought would be just right for tonight. For those of you who've been following the channel, you'll remember when we took this and split it open and took its seeds and made us a little apple tree. Oops. And uh, I'll leave the link for the video that we did that in, in the description below this video. So if you want to go check that out, I highly recommend you do. But we took this and we stratified our seeds and uh, put them through a cold process, got them to germinate. And well, ladies and gentlemen, here are our little baby apple trees. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that amazing? I mean, you really can't make this up. So these, I believe, are going to be the ones that we took out of the Honeycrisp. And wow, they're doing really, really nice. So these are the seeds that we all planted on video. Like I said, they will be in the description below. And look at how they have grown. But now it's time for them to take the next stage in their evolution of growth and join their big sisters. I want you to take a look at this. Ooh, we. <laughs> now, this one is about a year old now. And it is very, very special. It actually has a, two siblings, one which will be premiered in tonight's video. Here's the other one. Isn't that amazing? These things are three feet tall. And I've already got them in a five-gallon bucket, which is what I'm going to be teaching you guys tonight, how to get these guys properly transplanted. I'm going to go over soil mix. And I actually wrote this stuff down so I can go over it. And some of you will be very, very happy because I did it in gallon form. So it's very easy for you to mix up. Um, but yeah, isn't this awesome? Look at how beautiful. It's just absolutely extraordinary to think that we took this and turned it into this. And many, many generations of folks are gonna be enjoying the fruits that come from this tree. So, there's a little backstory to this, and I'll tell you that before we get going with tonight's video, um, to this tree right here, this very specific tree. And for those of the uh, individuals who are on my Telegram channel, they already kind of know this, but for those of you on YouTube, I'll let you in on a little secret. One day after shooting one of the garden videos on the indoor garden room uh, underneath the lights, I was actually at the counter uh, preparing a snack. <laughs> I had a, uh, an apple and I was actually talking to myself and talking to father and saying, you know, what do we do next? What kind of inspiration can I give the folks? You know, everybody grows tomatoes and we've got some neat videos on that. Everybody grows cucumbers, which, oh, look at that. There's a prequel to our next video, cucumbers and pots. And, uh, you know, but I wanted to give something extraordinary, something that you could give to your children, you know, something that wouldn't just die out every single winter and you have to start all over, something you could pass down. And so as I prepared my little snack and I split my apple open, believe it or not, inside of it, the seeds had begun to germinate. And there were, I think, five or six of them. And so I actually giggled because... When that kind of stuff happens, you can either believe in just sheer coincidence or you can take what's been handed to you and run with it. And so that's what I did. And I got them in some dirt and got them growing. And I believe they were a little bit bigger than this when we did the video that started these guys. Pretty neat, huh? So sometimes when you ask for things, you really do get an answer and it's right in front of your face. This tree represents a lot for me. 
with 15,000 subscribers now, which I still can't believe, it, it, it kind of represents like this tree. We just keep growing and growing and growing, and that's because of all of you and Father. So, without further ado, let's get this video started and show you guys what we got to do to take these little guys and turn them into these little monsters so they can live in these little buckets for, I'd say, another year and a half. Um, maybe two years and then they're going to be ready to go in their permanent in-ground home or in a big 20 gallon pot or bigger so uh, let's get this camera set up and get gardening I hope everybody's had a really really good Sunday evening do, 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 do. And I think that looks pretty good right there. Now, I'm going to do my best and speak up a little bit. I've got a step about a foot and a half away from my phone here that's recording this. Um, but hopefully the audio is still pretty good. So very obviously, the very first thing that we're going to need for our adventure here is going to be a five-gallon bucket. And what you're going to do is going to go ahead and drill about 10, maybe 15 holes in the bottom of the bucket like so. I used a three quarter inch drill bit and you can see that here real well. Um, I wouldn't go more than that because the structural integrity of your bucket will be compromised and it will actually start getting weak. Um, you know, once you fill this up and it weighs, you know, 10 pounds full of dirt and plant and everything else, you go to lift it up and the bottom of your bucket comes off. It's not going to be a happy day. So that's enough in drainage. And plus we're going to throw in a couple tricks tonight. They're going to keep you uh, from getting the uh, dampening off and the uh, root rot that most fruit trees are very susceptible to. So I'm going to show you a couple tricks and uh, that's going to be that. So our soil mix. Let's go ahead and talk about our soil mix here. What I've got, and I mix this up in a tub. Okay, so I tried to keep this as easy as possible. And obviously the plants have responded really well. So one bag of Kellogg raised bed and potting mix. This is an Omri listed product. So everything that's in it is organic. Um, it's actually really, really good stuff. They don't sponsor my videos by any means, but it does work. So that's why I recommend it for you guys, because I've been using this stuff for years and it outperforms everything else out there. I mean, out of the bag. Um, it has bat guano. It does have some earthworm castings. It has lots of really good stuff in it um, and forest material in every single uh, grade. So I highly recommend it. And hey, Kellogg, if you're watching, I'm like one of the only gardeners that uh, promote you guys out there. So uh Keep your brother in mind and send me some dirt. <laughs> to that one bag of Kellogg, okay, I have added one gallon or one gallon of Pro Mix, and that's just a professional uh, nursery potty mix. Uh, I use Sunshine Mix, uh, which I recommend. It's available in my area. You can go to any nursery and just say, "Hey." Um, I want to get some uh, Pro Mix here. I'll take you guys over and show you. This here is what I use. This is the uh, Sunshine Mix Professional Growing Aggregate. Um, it's got the mycorrhiza in it, which I really, really like. And we all enjoy that, right? Yep, we sure do. And that's fungus root. So mycorrhiza, fungus root. This is the symbiotic fungus that works with your plants to help feed them. Most people believe that by dumping rabbit poop and manures and stuff like that into your soils, that's what feeds your plants. Nope, that's not how it works at all. They can't eat that stuff. It needs to be turned into something else so that the plant can. That's what mycorrhiza does. And a whole bunch of other little neat guys that live in your dirt. They eat that rabbit poop. They eat that manure. They eat all of that stuff, and then they communicate with the plant and turn it into stuff that the plant is asking for. It's like a uh, on-demand delivery system to the plant. The plant communicates with the mycorrhiza, tells it what's going on, 
tells it what it needs. The mycorrhiza then communicates into the soil, finds the stuff, and leads the roots right to it, where it then eats it and poos out the nutrients that the plant wants. The plant then uptakes them, and voila. So, we got one bag of our Kellogg raised bed potting mix, one gallon of a professional growing aggregate, and like I said, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I get it because it's got the peat moss and all sorts of other stuff in it, okay? One quart earthworm castings into that mix. And uh, this is also a uh, certified organic product. And earthworm castings are really, really nice. They, they do a lot and really enrich your soil. And half a gallon of perlite. Oh, I didn't bring the bag over here, but we got some perlite right here. And one pint of Dr. Earth Organic and Natural Fruit Tree Fertilizer. This stuff is really good. I used it on the berries and stuff like that. And we can see a little apple right there. Yep, looks just like ours. So the trees that uh, I put this in, it, it actually responded really well. So I took all that and then I added half a gallon of premium compost made with composted poultry waste. Okay, like chicken manure, um, stuff like that. And this is a fully composted product. This is not a you know, regular, just put together compost. This has actually been screened. This has been aerated. This has been tossed. This has been worked for a very long time to produce a very high quality product. Um, if you have the ability to get some of this stuff, I highly recommend it because all the plants I've been using it on, wow, it really has been doing a good job. So after we've combined all that together, this is what we end up with. Absolutely beautiful. And these guys, like I said, you can't argue with the results. So there it is. So here we got our bucket. So the very first thing that we're going to do, because we want to make sure that we have really good drainage, especially in the bottom half of a five gallon bucket. Okay, the top half of your bucket from like here up does a pretty good job aspirating out the water. It, the, it'll kind of draw it out through the surface a little bit. But the bottom half has a tendency to kind of really pack down and do some really nasty things. And that's where you start getting some rot. And folks come out and they look and they see that this part of the dirt is, you know, dry. And they think, oh, my goodness, my tree needs a whole bunch of water. And they dump, you know, two gallons of water in this thing. And then it sits down here in the bottom, you know, four or five inches of soil begins to rot. And that's no bueno for the plant. So here's a trick that's going to help prevent that. Some folks in potted plants like to use like terracotta pieces. And you can do that or some rocks or, you know, whatever you got. I prefer a more natural approach. So what I got here is some old rotted wood chunks. These guys came out of the compost screen, um, which, you know, they look pretty good. I rinsed them off and everything, but yeah. When you use wood chunks, there are two types of wood that you should never use. Number one, oak. And that's because oak contains tannic acid, and tannic acid can kill your plants. That's never, ever a good thing. Number two is walnut or black walnut. Don't ever put that in your garden, near your garden. And if you have a walnut tree, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, this is maple and some spruce and some other yeah, just random stuff. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to toss this in here, just like so. Matter of fact, we'll just do it again. There we go. Let's see if we get the neighbor's dog to bark on that one. All right. So, and it doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, we just want to kind of do that. All right. Now, what we're going to do real quick is we're going to come over here and we're going to get a scoop of our real nice dirt. And we're going to have it go around and we're going to sprinkle that down in the bottom. Matter of fact, we're going to get another one. 
And what we're trying to do here is we're actually trying to get the bottom of this kind of just covered up a little bit for our next little trick that's going to prevent that root rot and stuff like that. So we're going to make sure this is kind of spread out. Maybe move this stick there. Maybe move that one there like that. Maybe break this one again. Maybe. Oh, yep. Ta-da. All right, we're going to throw one more little half scoop of dirt in here. All right, that's good enough. Okay, now the next trick. We're going to take one quart, maybe just a little bit more than one quart of perlite. And we're going to go ahead and just dump all of that in there. Poof, look at that. Now, what the perlite is going to do is going to give us that added drainage that we're looking for. So we don't want to just a, a whole bed of perlite. So now we're going to toss in some dirt right on top of that. And we're going to reach down in here and just give it a little mix. So it looks like Oreo cookie chunks. Ta-da! That's what you're kind of looking for, something that looks like that. Now, if you were to just water this or try to put plants in it, it would just choom, go right through. And that's what we're looking for. And you can kind of see it here because of the lights I got right there is our soil level right now. And this is probably the most critical part is the bottom. And that's where you're going to get your rot and all sorts of crazy stuff going on. Okay, so now we got this going on. We can add some more dirt. Just our regular mix. I just get her kind of filled up. And if you're liking tonight's video, please remember to hit the like button. And if you are already a subscriber, I thank you so very, very much. And leave a comment if you've been growing an apple tree from one of our first videos. I know I saw about four or five this morning when I was taking a look of folks that were uh, talking about their apple trees and the success they've had um, after watching the video. And that's absolutely awesome. So, yeah, leave a comment below. Um, and, hey, here's another thing. There's a little bell notification that's there on the YouTube screen. And if you hit that, it will let you know every time that I make a video. Right now, because I carry, I guess you would say a religious overtone in the uh, gardening, because, well, I'm a Christian man and this is a Christian gardening channel, so what do you expect? Um, well, YouTube doesn't seem to really take a liking to that, and they've been throttling the videos back because I've been doing that. And so I'm actually doubling down and leaning in on that because that's not right, and that's not Christian, and that is not what Father wants. He wants everybody to have some apple trees. He wants everybody to have cucumbers. He wants everybody to have pepper plants like you see over there and everything else. There is no reason to keep the free information away from the people. There's only one reason that they would try to do that. And that's to keep you from having this. I want you to have this. Father wants you to have this. So, get this. Because if they don't want you to have it, that's a surefire sign that you need to have it. So, now that we got our bucket filled up about three quarters of the way here, okay, I'm going to go ahead and set this to the side. Remove this. And I'm going to introduce you guys to the star of tonight's video. Dun, dun, dun. That's right. Let me go ahead and set it up here. Take a step back. Look at this. <laughs> now, this was uh, it's the same as the others, but it's just gone a little bit wild. Um, it's a little tall. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be doing some things tonight to get this under control and um, get it trained up. But first and foremost, we're going to get it out of this uh, two-gallon pot that it's in right here and uh, get it over into this five so it can really spread out. And I think you're going to be able to see the uh, root, uh, this what the trick does with the uh, perlite.
to help with the roots and uh, to really get them to open up. So let me get the camera set up because I'm going to need both my hands for this one. And like I said, uh, I'll try to do the best I can. Let me get this turned. All right. I think that'll work just fine right there. All right, we're going to move our dirt bucket over here. Now, before you go and try to do a transplant on anything, it's a very good idea to go ahead and water your plant well. And let it sit for a few hours, and that'll keep all the dirt from just flying off. You know, if you, you go and tip the plant over and it's nothing but dry dirt, um, it, it's just going to fly everywhere. And you're going to lose a bunch of dirt around the roots, and that's not going to be good for the plant either. So... This plant already has a small stake here that comes up and it's already tied off. So I'm going to leave that in place. It's already been with the plant for a really long time. Um, so I'll just keep a hold of that and the plant, turn the whole pot upside down, get the plant out, and we're going to set it directly in here. I'm going to flip them over, give them a good old tap. Ta da! Okay, good deal. All right, let me pour this off. You can see the perlite there that I had in the bottom of this pot when I did the first transplant when these guys were little. Now let me pull this over here so you guys can get a good look at this. I want you to look at the root mass that's coming out of that. The roots found that down there and instead of dampening off and air, air pruning, I, I'm sorry, and doing their thing, they actually just decided to keep growing and growing and growing. And I knew that one day we'd be taking this out of here and you know replanting it so i wanted those roots to be exposed so i didn't have to dig the dirt Ooh, look at those big side roots right there beautiful so let's go ahead and get this guy in here and we're just going to drop him right on in Ta -da! give him a nice little push down and we are going to take our dirt let me move this over here And the mess is absolutely fine because I can come through and actually just go like this and push it down. And right below my table here, made out of a pallet, is a nice big tote that catches all the fallings. Just a little tip and trick idea for the back door. A pallet with four legs makes a great little planting table like this. So, here we go. We've got our plant. We've got them all... Let me see if I can move this guy over there on this side so you guys can get a better view. Let me make sure that's good. There we go. We got our plant in the five gallon bucket. Now we want to get them positioned really good. Now, before I do anything else, there is one other thing I'm going to do. Because this guy has gotten really tall and started to lean over, I want to give him some support. So I've taken this stick here. And I've just attached a piece of this garden wire, about a foot of it, and I've left it sticking straight out. And the reason I did, left it sticking straight out is because I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to stick it right here in the side of the bucket, all the way on the outside of the bucket, where I'm not going to harm his roots until I get all the way to the bottom, just like that. Then I'm going to come through and start packing in. So we'll go around the outside edge of our bucket here. And just start filling it in. And it's very important that you do this um, very carefully and really take your fingers and push this stuff down. Because what you don't want is a big air pocket down in there, which will cause air pruning to occur inside the pot or could create a little hot air pocket and kill the roots on the side of the plant. And that's definitely something you don't want. Um, when you're watering your plants during the summer, sometimes you'll see the soil kind of, you know, pulled away from the pot. And it leaves that ring of hollowness around the outside edge. In the gardening world, we call that the ring of death. So, you don't want that. That means your soil is exhausted and or is too dry and needs to be watered down. So I'm going to go around and really push this down around these edges. That is very, very important. 
to really get this to set good. We already had a real nice base down in there. And like I said, we already have our fruit tree fertilizer in here. We got our earthworm castings. We got everything. There's some fat guano. There's some kelp. I think some kelp compost that's in there. Some added perlite. And we're going to get it to right about there. Give it a nice little pat down to get it to some settling to happen around the edge of our bucket. And that's going to be that. Maybe we'll go around and give them one more little push around the edge. Just to create that little depression so it can hold some water for us. Okay. Now that we got that portion done, let me go ahead and turn this up and see if we can get a good angle on this. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Well, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, that might work. Hopefully it does. Maybe back to this back a bit. Okay, now we've got our apple tree up here and we've got our long wire. You can kind of see why I left it so long now. So I'm going to go ahead and take my tree and bend them on this side of this stake. And I'm going to use this wire to go all the way around him. And now I'm not. Let me show you guys this. Let me get you guys up a little closer here. I am not going to close this loop all the way around this tree trunk. I want this tree to be doing this when the wind blows on it. That is the only thing that is going to strengthen this trunk and get it strong enough to stand on its own once that day comes. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just bend it like this and just give him one pinch over. That's it. Like I said, I want that tree to be able to still move and still bend a little bit so that its trunk can strengthen up as it grows. So let me turn her around. And we'll take a look and see what we've done here. Look at that. What do you think, Patriot Gardeners? Pretty nice, huh? Well, there's one thing that we have to do. And what's that? Do you remember what it is? Well, in loving memory of old Alabama gardener, we need to water it well and watch it grow. So we're going to go ahead and give it a nice drink of water to get those roots settled and get this soil to set down. And when you first water it, you know, take your time. Don't just dump a, you know, bucket of water on top of it and walk away. You know, take the time to sit here and put it in real nice and slow so that it trickles down and, you know, settles those outside edges. 